Good evening, everyone. Hello. Of course not. There we oh, there go. Oh, yeah, there you are. Oh, my goodness. Uh, things defaulting to the wrong setting again. But I'm here, so yes. Hello. <laughs> 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 you didn't miss anything. I was just talking out my ass. And, you know, thankfully, Prim was there to give the traditional hello. <laughs> 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 but we are here. We are here. Uh, ready to carry on like wayward sons and daughters and all ports in between back into Sigil Confidential. Uh, uh, excited to see where this goes. Things are going to be taking some interesting turns potentially. Um, potentially lethal ones. <laughs> As always. But yeah, Prim, I know you're chomping at the bit probably to do a recap. Yeah, so let's find out how we got here, shall we? Mm -hmm. Last time on Sigil Confidential, the crew puzzled over how to get the sleeping elven woman out of her chamber. As they did, the creature they saw disappear through the wall earlier stared back at them from the window. It made no attempts at communication, but what it did do was make the floor at the feet at their feet, incorporeal, first attempting to make the crew fall through the floor and then grabbing a hold of Draken and dragging him down. Draken teleported away from the creature's hold and onto the Whispering Gale. He arrived to chaos. The gale was on fire, listing to one side, and the sailors were fighting amongst themselves. Draken narrowly avoided getting punched as he made a beeline back to the crew aboard the slipstream. Meanwhile, everyone was dancing around the creature's attempts to make the others fall through the floor, narrowly catching folks who couldn't jump out of the way in time, and trying desperately to rid themselves of their foe, who was very difficult to land a hit on. With Draken's return, everyone fled to him to get ready to teleport out of there and onto the gale, and Rat warped the sleeping elven woman out of her chamber and into his arms. Draken gave everyone the ability to fly instead, which gave them an easier time against a creature, and they finally managed to defeat it. It let out a piercing wail and pitifully reached for the sleeping elf with trembling hands before disintegrating into nothing. Discussion over what should be their next move had the crew split. Draken's verdict from seeing what was happening on the Whispering Gale was that the ship was beyond saving and that the crew should abandon it, and Istu, Rat, and Cinder took Draken's side. The Ghost and Jimmy argued that they should go back to the ship and make an attempt to put out the fires and save it. The Gale was their only reliable ride, and the Angler required that the crew deliver him and the ship to Cairn to make good on their wager and not become slaves to an eldritch being. Draken made the point that the Angler was on the ship and wasn't doing anything about the fires, but the Ghost fired back that the Angler wanted them to lose a bet. He doesn't actually need the ship, so of course he wasn't going to do anything. These were all a part of his games. With them having no time to waste, Jimmy and the ghost flew down to the gale. As they observed the chaos that Draken witnessed earlier, the angler appeared behind them, enjoying the show. The ghost pressed him on why he let the destruction of the ship continue, but he insisted that the gale was fine. The two turned to look at the ship, and it was, in fact, fine. After a moment, it shifted back to being on fire, with people screaming and dying all over the place. They realized that being out of phase with time that had affected the Shanakesians on board also affected the gale, and they returned to the slipstream to inform the others of this re revelation. While they mulled over what to do next, they decided it was time to wake the elven woman. Terrified, she asked what the crew wanted with her and what happened to the others on the ship. 
They gently informed her of the horrors that had happened there out in the cosmos, and amidst her grief over the loss of her mother, the sight of the horror specks at the base of the vortex filled her with a resolve to go down there and try to save the others, which was exactly where the crew had wanted to go next. What awaits the crew on the horror specks? Will they be able to regain control of the Whispering Gale, or is it forever a lost cause? Find out, starting right now on Sigil Confidential, The Uncanny Odyssey. Odyssey, 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 Odyssey. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's giving you some echo there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, um, as always. And, uh, yeah, that is exactly where we left off. You guys staring out at the ship. Uh, and I guess considering how, if, why, when, where, and perhaps even a quantum question or two. Perhaps. <laughs> so, before we do jump in, I think I'm going to give a shout out to Skull Splitter Dice, the metallic dice that can be used as a self-defense weapon in a pinch. They make the greatest metallic dice in the known universe, and ninjas use them as caltrops as they assassinate bad guys on other dimensions. So be sure to pick you up some, and when you do, use code FEATHERFALL at checkout to save 10% on a new set of dice. And of course, uh-oh, of course, you guys know what's coming up. Don't forget about Found Familiar Coffee, the caffeinated beverage of giants and champions, titans and gods. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to reach out with your hearts, your hands, and your pocketbooks and procure some of this fine caffeinated beverage. Be sure once again to use code FEATHERFALL at checkout and receive a 10% off bonus. Thank you very much and away we go. Back to the show. <laughs> they need to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I was going to say, I really hyped them up, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you, you push it a little hard. And technically, I think they do pay you. Oh, it's, you know, it, it's true, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just want some free coffee. <laughs> I just want some free coffee. Uh, but then, you know, I'm a cheapskate, I admit it. So, welcome, is to... Good to see you, as always. Good to be here. <laughs> it's good to have you. So, we are just now picking up and ready to go. What is the plan, my friends? Well, at the end of the last session, our elven woman said that she wanted a moment to rest and reflect as she was, you know, sitting there at the uh, hole in the hole and just, you know, looking at the horror specs. Mm -hmm. You'll notice I updated her token. So she actually Did has you? one now. Yeah. It's not appearing on my screen. No. Oh, I think she might be in uh, darkness for us. She's right next to you. I know. Right here is black. Oh. Yeah. Can you see her now? <laughs> no. No? How about now? Right here is light. And this is where I remember her being, like, at light. Yeah. Can you see her now? Yeah. Okay. So dark. You must be out of the light range. That's probably what that is. Because the, am, the yeah. rest of the party is way back there. Yep. Okay. So, um, it, of course, she'll take her moment and reflect quietly. Um, she's a strange elf from your experience, Bren, um, watching her, uh, as, as you are very familiar with humanoid behavior patterns generally. You've been on sigil, spent a long time there, and you've seen a lot of different folk come and go. She's 
She's elven, certainly, but there's something about her that's different. You, you can't really place your finger on it. There's a certain grace, a poise to her that's unlike the others that you've seen. <laughs> oh, a graceful elf, you don't say. Yeah. The others are clumsy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> And I suppose Bryn would be the only judge of this being fed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I seen an elf for three. <laughs> Angry master noises. <laughs> From the distance, you can hear a shadow moan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant Bryn being the only judge of this, <laughs> like with the. Uh, uh, you say, oh, the other elves are so clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, tripping over their fate. So, um, has she officially introduced herself yet? No, she hasn't said her name. Okay. Just want to make sure. I uh, think it was something like 20 decks. Is that all they have? <laughs> She's got a 30. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> So she turns to you, Bryn, after reflecting for a moment. Still very somber, kind of sad-eyed, but curious. Um, sets her jaw in, in a look of determination and... Shell Unders Core donated $20. Whoa. Let the party decide and live with their decision smile. <laughs> $20. Wow. Shun. Shweesh. Wow. So hey. we, we do the uh, the the donations a little differently, but it will still be something that has a grand effect, um, just not the usual roll on a did table and destroy characters. <laughs> did Shun just pay twenty dollars to kill us? Yes, yes. Shun. <laughs> Shun. It was. Come on. It was a love murder. <laughs> it was an, an act of murderous love. So yeah, we will throw that in there. Um, definitely, we'll let the party decide. <laughs> Live with it. <laughs> so she turns to you, and and once again, determined, set jaw, sad eyes, kind of looks you up and down, and, and says, "Okay, how are we getting to the Horospex?" Well. You asked earlier if there was still an escape pod on the ship, and I believe there is at least one. If you would like us to lead you there, and you could tell us if that is actually one of these so-called pods. <laughs> she... If it's the one I'm thinking of, I don't know if we're going to fit much of a boarding party in it. <laughs> um... Yeah, hundred dollars to do it, Shun. Um, she she smiles, and says, I, "I appreciate the offer, but I know the way." And she begins to head off. <laughs> All right. Um. She smiles and nods at you guys as she makes her way past you. <laughs> she, she's just like trucking. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and here the map goes black. Oh, oh my goodness. Send us like what? Yeah, I think only some of you have the lights. Yeah. Oof, that's terrifying. Send us vision is pretty good for 120 foot in anything, really. Is Az coming with us? Who? We're, we're all together, right? I assume. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here. Just here. I'll let everyone catch up because she pauses here. Okay. Maybe it's not As. I'm think maybe I'm thinking of a different character. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I'm doing it again, or am I not? It's just. <laughs> In this universe, we are joined by the esteemed Rat. Although yeah. Rat, oh my God. Where is Rat? Did Rat not come? Jesus. Rat did not come. <laughs> where, where are we going? <laughs> you got left behind. <laughs> oh my God. 
Uh, you want me to just over here. you want me to just move you up there with the party? Mm-hmm. Here, there's, there's one of you was carrying a light source here. I think that, that was, was Issue's crown of stars. There we go. Which is probably gone. So. Oh, should I get rid of it? Unless for them. I mean, an hour, right? It. I don't know if it's or been an hour. Until you use it. Like no, it hasn't been an hour. You still got it. No, okay. It's been like ten minutes. Uh, all right, well, all right. I'm not going to argue or, with you. <laughs> yeah, or until you, you use all of your moats. So, right. um, as as she reaches the the bridge of the slipstream, her eyes kind of turn and and lock on to um, the chair and the body on the ground, which you get the sense that she recognizes immediately. She makes her way over to it, kneels down next to it, and with like one very tender finger kind of runs a touch gently along the, the dead captain's face. Uh, she's got her back to you, so she's just going to sit in there quietly. Prince just, she's giving her space. Anybody else doing anything? Just you know, not saying anything just yet. Jimmy's not all that great with kids. Mm-hmm. Send is just staying quiet, watching. Okay. Are, are you actively watching or? Yeah. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm probably watching too just because that's the only thing in this room to look at like if you're watching (laughs) if you're watching um because i know it's one of those moments and a lot of people are kind of like oh i'm just gonna look everywhere but there (laughs) Uh, if you're watching give me a perception check please oh that's not a good one for me Friends technically wow. watching. Okay. Oh. Draken. Nice. His turn. Oh, sorry. I'll fix that. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> I'm back. I brought my numbers. <laughs> just gonna have you start rolling a D ten and just add it to twenty. <laughs> That's basically how rogues work anyways, yeah. except I always roll the ten. <laughs> so, um, basically all of you but uh, Sender and Istu notice, or was the advantage intentional, Istu? I don't know. Okay. Mm, I have, I have like, passed the perception bonus from racial um, merits, but okay. honestly, this fits the role play because I'm probably, like, <laughs> I think my characters probably, like, have one eye on whatever's going on over there and just like vaguely distracted okay that's fine so uh jimmy draken uh bren notice um first off you notice that this is a very emotional moment she's choked up um she's trying to bite it down and with a shaking hand i you figure she's kind of saying goodbye to her mother the captain Wait, I thought her mom was in the other room. Am I getting my rooms mixed up? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I am. Yeah, this has just got the... the That's right. Just, this is just yeah. the pilot. The pod. That's right. If someone That's right. died here, I don't know that we've... Somebody did die here. There was have, have we, died have we been in this room? Cause... Yeah. We've been to this yeah. room. Oh. This was this the was captain's like the... chair. Hmm. Yeah, this is like the chair. first room we went the into. pilot's chair, not necessarily the captain. Okay, well, in, in that case... Anybody being in here... In that case, she'll carry on, um, realizing, of Sorry. course, that no, you're good. Realizing, of course, that the side of the ship is blown out. She'll head back, <laughs> um, back through the door, and she's gonna crawl through. Sorry, Jim. Darkness. Through the door. She went through the door there, right here. Brynn will just crawl through at this point. Okay. 
Okay, so this is where the body was, right? Yeah. Okay, so we can replay this. <laughs> 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 we'll keep the rolls, um, but now we're at least in position. So, what I was saying, uh, those of you, uh, Bren, Drake, and Jimmy, notice as she's sitting there choked up trying to deal with the feelings that she's feeling, the body twitches. Oh! Oh, roll. She doesn't seem to notice. Would we find that odd? I don't know what you do. <laughs> I mean, bodies twitch, right? Uh, That's the thing they do. Like, well, dead not... bodies move all the time, right? Do? <laughs> do they? You can have, you can have like um, says says the, the dead muscle man. spasms. <laughs> but usually the electrical activity in a body is gone after the first the, century or the so. First century you know. or so yeah. Oh, this long <laughs> dead, not yeah, recent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, long yeah. dead. I, I didn't notice. I was too busy looking at Cinder's hair. Sorry. No, uh, no <laughs> I didn't even see the body there. Yeah, we're yeah, twelve. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess the body's technically in the room, and but yeah. <laughs> Drake, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So didn't notice. Um, but yeah, you see a twitch. Kind of the foot moves just slightly. Britain's going to look back at Jimmy and Drake and the bit of a wide-eyed stare. I he's noticed doing that. the point where he's just got like his hand up by his face and he's kind of gesturing down at the foot. He's like, eh, that would be really, really depressing. I saw that this time. Normally I miss things. I know what's going on. Friend's going to nod. You, you, I don't you... want to interrupt her grieving, but I also worry for her safety right now. Well, I, I have no problem interrupting the so don't worry, I will happily walk <laughs> over there, and I proceed and I proceed to do that. All right. So That's as the way. as you're making your way, we'll say as you get to right about here. Okay. The corpse lurches forward and grabs a hold of the woman, and you just see the face kind of eyes rolled back in its head, you know, all decayed and nasty, going ah, and going for a bite on uh, your young charge there. Dun dun dun! Shit, friends out of magic still! I, Shit. I'll let you rule who's able to respond to that there, church. Um, well, let me see here. First things first. Boom, boom, boom. Let do this. <laughs> Sorry, that evil laugh came out. Um, Yeah, before I go making maneuvers. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it, it lurches forward. You hear a gasp out and a shocked, like, choked down scream as this thing, her mother's corpse, lifts up off the ground and attempts to, to bite her. She shoves back on her mother's body manages to detach and step back, almost barreling backwards into Draken as he's making his way. Um, you can hear both the fear and the horror in her voice as it quakes and quivers. And I believe it's time. I'm going to click this clear button like five times here for initiative. Maybe it'll work this time. <laughs> Time for initiative. Nice. <laughs> hey, very good. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we're all good. Did 
I roll good? No. Mm, good for us. <laughs> so, um, my initiative is a 25. 25. I can't fix it because it's like int mod stuff. Okay. There. So, um, I, I'll show you how to fix that later if you remind me in uh, okay. Roll20. But I, I just want to point out as we begin, I assume everyone's rolled, yeah? Yeah, you're going to want to resort your list. Yeah. yeah. Um, as we begin, I do just want to thank Shun for his donation. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so this was a result of his donation, her mother's corpse reanimating. Yes, yes. Thank you, Shun. <laughs> and this was a great horror moment, too. I love it. Um, yes, so let's do this. Uh, is two. You're up. Yes. Um, so the dead body, I'm assuming, is in here somewhere, right? Yes. Oh, you're um, not in line of sight yet. Oh, uh oh. I I peek around the corner. Okay. Um, see what's going on, and. You know what? <laughs> nope. We didn't move, move. back over here. <laughs> L let me get your crown for you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> it's it's on top of you there. Okay. I uh I peek around. I see what's going on. A uh, creepy dead body. Oh, no. And I go over here. All right. <laughs> I I use this turn to kind of see what's happening and formulate a plan. Right. <laughs> Cuz I have no idea did creepy body. No thanks. No problem. All right. Brent, you're up. All right. Well, me and my presently magicless self, there's only about one thing that I really can do. So let's see what I get. Oh, hmm. Interesting. I'll take renowned duelist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. I believe I remember what that is. I'm going to check that right now. Sounds like a good one for a fight. <laughs> I do believe it is a fighting one, but I uh, can't remember exactly. I think it's um, summons a renowned duelist and uh, yeah, makes a melee spell attack like from the spirit that you summon. Sweet. So let me see. Sweet. Yeah. So it takes force damage. So yeah, she will definitely use that right now. All right. Groovy. Love me. Alright. So 20 to hit, 17 force damage as the spirit appears next to the corpse of her mother. Hmm. That. I'm going to let that hit, although technically it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, based on the nature of what you're using to hit with, yes, I'm going to let it hit. All right, cool. <laughs> Sorry. You you tag it pretty good, and and the the corpse of her mother goes. Ah! <laughs> uh, all right. Anything else for you? That's it. All right, Cinder, you're up. Um. Well, I guess I'm gonna move in. All right. I take it that's the mother here. Correct. All right. Well, yeah. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna smack it, and if I get a good hit, I'm probably gonna smite too. Go for it. Let's see what you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solid hit. Solid. And it's what? Uh, is it an undead? So it'd be three d eight. Oh wait, no, oh. 30, 30, you missed by one. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th that's saying... Uh, I don't get the one plus six plus six. 
on the damage. It's saying 19 slashing. Yeah, it, it's 2d6. It says reroll less than two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's the right. Second six is, that's right. is the one reroll. Uh, so it's 19, and then I've got to roll 3d8. Right? For, for the smite. For the smite. So, yeah, 37 damage. Wallop. 37. You uh, cleave through the spacesuit and just see a whole swath of rotten flesh fly out and tore a chunk out of her. Um, the creature staggers from the hit. Anything else for you? Let me see. No, not for now. Okay. That brings us to her. She, um, you know, let's do this. <laughs> she begins to weep uh, and cry, terrorized by the returned corpse of her mother and turns around and grabs a hold of the first person she can facing away from her mother, which is you, Draken. Uh, this poor elven woman has grasped a hold of you, shivering in terror and is clinging to you for dear life, mumbling to herself, please don't let this be real, please don't let this be real. Uh, Jimmy, you're up. Yeah, this is much less than ideal. Is it even possible to squeeze past Drake in here? I remember this being a very small area. Uh, the opening here isn't too bad. You could get through. All right, I squish around. As I pass, I say to Draken, uh, maybe make sure she doesn't see this next bit. Maybe like... <laughs> And I gesture with my head towards the other side of the room. Ah, uh, when is the last time we clapped the cheeks of somebody else's mother? <laughs> that was... That was Black That was Black Jammer. Yeah, I had <laughs> <laughs> recognized that anyway. And of course, the most inappropriate things at the most inappropriate times. <laughs> That is sort of how, how he lives his life. Yeah. <laughs> what a bastard. All right. Uh, still standing? Uh, the corpse? Yes. Yeah. Well, I do, I do sort of hate to do it, but... How's that looking? Uh, that hits. It it does what it says on the tin. Thirty damage. All right. Uh, the creature staggers once a more and like almost, like almost topples over, barely keeping its footing. It's taken some severe damage physically. You can tell. <laughs> also, we have another example here of the machines liking Jacob because whenever I was playing Jimmy last time, he was not rolling this well. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's it's because Jimmy's nice to Blackjammer. <laughs> it's that's honestly true. I've spent so much time buttering up the sword. <laughs> Blackjammer knew it was you, Bryn. <laughs> Sentient objects. They can always tell. All right. Uh, all right, I use my bonus action, uh, oh, cutting yeah. action. I disengage, and I move back here to try and, like, shield her from the, the sight of this. I, I just kind of, like, put my arm in between. I say, uh, yeah, don't look this way. All right, that's fair. Okay, Draken. All righty, I am going to put my arm around her, comforting her, kind of making sure her head is... Not facing it. And then I am going to cast that, which is purely verbal, so I don't need my hand. Psychic Lance. Nice. Okay. Uh, and that's intelligence save for half damage. 
Intelligence save, yep. Oh, okay, yeah, you're, you're good. You, you got this one. <laughs> well, not only that, it is also incapacitated for my next turn. So, you, you, you grip her by the head gently, kind of shielding her face, and reach out uh, verbally and launch your spell. Uh, in, in that classic calm draken voice and you see the creature kind of shudder and and its hands shake as the body just convulses once or twice and then the lower half of the head blows out uh, the jaw onto the ground and the whole thing just crumples in a pile on the floor nice um the young girl kind of pushes off of you a little bit and looks up, tears streaming down her face, her face coated in a fresh layer of glitter uh, that she's completely unaware of. And she looks at you, Draken, and says, is it over? The thing is down. On the other hand, you now have glitter all over your face. What? It just happened by being around. I apologize, but it just is who I am. You now have glitter. <laughs> I'm cursed forever. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so she wipes her tears and as much of the glitter off as she can. Um, she looks at all of you very flummoxed. She's having a hard time keeping composure, but she's trying. Um, she refuses to look back at her mother's fallen form. The fight went a lot quicker than I expected. Um, <laughs> you do so much damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Guess I just need to be meaner. <laughs> she uh, brushes her suit off. Uh, she's so uh, up until this point, she's actually been wearing. Uh, like a, a kind of a form-fitting undergarment, almost like a like long johns. It would be the easiest way to explain it, like an under armor type suit. Um, she moves to one side of the room and opens a small compartment and pulls out one of the strange suits that you see the other dead elves wearing, and immediately begins to put it on, still refusing to look back at the remains of her mother. We should we should do something about that, actually. Mm. Brynel softly nod in agreement. Shove it into space! <laughs> it's just a giant opening, just throw it out. Yeah, you gotta do this with with ceremony. It's a ceremony, Drake. Are you guys openly just talking? <laughs> that that was all very under my breath. So I will make a stealth check if you like. But yes. And likewise for me, because I'm, Bryn's also trying to do this under her breath. Right. Drake and... is as well. Let me just see if she hears you. <laughs> I was. That was I was quiet. Drake and voice. <laughs> Does not hear you. <laughs> oh, does hear Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Draken, that might not be the best idea, considering she might accidentally see it on the way to the Horus Becks. It would be in our best interest <laughs> to leave her body here. So, as you're discussing this, she reaches into the compartment that she's pulled the, the suit out of as she finishes suiting up. Very casually, stands up straight, reaches into the compartment, um, and pulls out this very strange looking contraption. Um, 
It looks, for all intents and purposes, like a hand crossbow, but missing the bow. And she turns around, looks at the corpse of her mother, aims this thing at it, and pulls the trigger, and a blast of energy issues forth and incinerates the body. <laughs> That's hmm. an interesting Probably perked Rat's attention up, but... <laughs> Bryn is just like... She wide-eyed stares at what used to be notice. the corpse, <laughs> and then at the girl, and, uh... Yeah, she is just like, uh, okay. Not saying that out loud, but that's like the ex expression on her face. So she, she puts the device in her belt into what appears to be a, a sheath of some sort for it. She straightens her suit out, kind of looks at each of you. Takes a breath. Still kind of quivering, you can tell she's fighting to keep everything under control here. And she says, I am Saren Faywin. And as of this moment, I am su assuming control of the vessel, both the slipstream and the Haruspect as the last remaining member and officer able to be captain. I hope you don't stand in the way of this. I wouldn't dream it. We have no idea how any of these vehicles are supposed to be operated, so I'm glad you're here to take the lead on this. I spread my hands and I say, Listen, I've got a ship. It's a little headstrong mind, but it's still a ship. Uh, <laughs> now, I feel like taking command of the Harrowspecs is going to present a little of a challenge. It is my challenge to undertake in my duty. No, not yours alone. We have a mutual interest here. Because I don't really think we're getting out of this situation without that thing shifting a little bit. Well, as much as I appreciate your rescue on more than one occasion now, and as much as I am in no, no position to argue this matter, I'm this is something we're going to need to discuss when we get there, as far as your goals and mine, and how and if they are actually aligned. Yes, now, we've been familiarizing ourselves just a little bit with the story of what's happened here, of course, but uh, don't worry, we tell our story pretty well. This guy does the shadow puppets. It's a great distraction. Shadow puppets? <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. For now, let's get to the pod. I've... I'm eager to be rid of this place. I believe the pod is down this hallway. And she points to, you know, down here. Yeah. <laughs> She, she begins to move once again. Slightly hurried pace. <laughs> Eager to be away from that room. Who has a light source? <laughs> it's so dark. Thank you. So once again, you've entered this large, large room uh, filled with broken debris, large swaths of, of the structure have been torn away, open to the realm beyond visibly. Um, in the center, once again, is a large craft of some sort that occasionally is knocking against the hull, floating in space. Um, Saren looks at it. 
kind of frustrated a little bit, but once again, you know, you see her set her resolve. She takes a deep breath and uh, mumbles a few things under her breath and grabs her belt and twists it, the belt buckle, and kind of pushes off the ground with her toes and begins to float uh, slowly towards the craft until she reaches it. Um, she opens a small hatch on the side and looks to you guys and says, well, if you're coming, come on. How big of a jump is that, Church? About 15 feet. 15 feet? I think I can make 15 feet, right? <laughs> well, how long has it been? I feel like the fly would have worn off by now. Yeah, most likely. It's been two combats. <laughs> Cinder would misty step. Okay. This two would misty step. Abs absolutely. Draken can fly. Question. Yes. Can we do that at the same time? Can you both misty step at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> Bunk. Ah. <laughs> yeah, no. For it's... style points in tandem. Just. <laughs> so your spells go off at the same time as you both have the same idea at the same Think? time. You land in the opening, smushed together with your noses touching. <laughs> <laughs> um, awkwardly. <laughs> oh, what a catastrophe! <laughs> More coordination is needed. We'll have to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, where, what is going on with this pod thing? Uh, <laughs> Descender blush orange. Yeah. Perfect. Bright orange. <laughs> His hair glows brighter. <laughs> so, Jimmy, I know you can make the jump. Uh, Bryn, what about you? Uh... <laughs> well, Bryn's sort of out of her magic right now, so she cannot miss you, Seb, so... Um... I'll, I'll let Draken give you a hand up if you want. Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's got wings. He could he could lift you 15 feet. <laughs> Alright, we'll do that. Okay. I offer you my arm. A gentleman. <laughs> a gentleman. Prepare to be Indeed. glitterified. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's gonna be everywhere. <laughs> Poor Sarah. Oh, Brit, Bryn doesn't care. She sees Draken like a brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole party's probably been covered in glitter for a long time. So, Rat, you, you I know you can get up there no problem too, right? You got yep. your shoes. I imagine your jetpack makes a little putting noise <laughs> as you go places. Like... Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Bran, as she gets on the ship, will say, oh, I'm tired of having my magic exhausted. I need to rest at some point. So, uh, as you guys enter, Saren has moved to the front of the craft and sat down in a seat that must must be a helm of some sort, based upon the, the little layout and what it looks like. You can kind of determine that. The back part where you guys are entering is literally just a row of about 12 seats um, and a door in the very back that's closed. Inside smells musty, old air, like that coppery scent of what you hope is rust and not old blood. Um, there's a lot of dust and debris and broken glass uh, in the craft and you, there's some damage here. Um, some of it's fairly significant, but it seems not that you know anything about the, in, the internal workings, obviously, but it seems to just be physical, structural damage. So you're hoping, <laughs> hoping, 
hoping it won't just come apart in the transfer. What do you guys do as she's beginning her systems checks? Bryn will sit down in one of the seats. And she'll just kind of look around at the ship um, a bit uneasy. She has a bit of an unease on her face, which is a bit rare for her. But um, she tries to look for, like, you know, something to hold on to while she's in that seat. Or something to, you know, keep her in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jimmy will sit in the next one over. He's kind of smiling. He didn't <laughs> think he was actually going to get out to the horror specs. <laughs> All right. What about the rest of you? Anything? I'm going to try and pry off at a, a panel from, like, one of the walls. I want to I just look at how they, how they did this stuff. <laughs> what are they hiding? Are you going to start taking the craft apart? <laughs> Rat, my brother, I think it's missing yeah, enough panels bit. already. <laughs> oh, yeah, just one of those decorative ones. <laughs> um, all right, so you're monkeying around with the panel. Uh-huh. Okay. We'll say that that's what's going on at the moment. Anybody else? I would like uh, to sit down as well. Okay. Um, I want to watch the checks in okay. case we need that uh, to know what what like what needs to be checked in different places. All right. There's a lot of dials and levers and buttons and lights and little screens mm -hmm. with strange readouts that are starting to come on. And the entire craft is starting to vibrate. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Definitely not distracting myself from anything. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So as this continues, the craft, like I said, it's vibrating. There's dust starting to kind of kick up. Um, smaller bits of some of the the loose damage are starting to kind of fall in on you guys nothing damaging but it's it's like uh <laughs> disconcerting um and the craft begins to shudder and you hear this and it kind of dies down and you hear her cuss oh, no. and, I didn't, and elven I didn't do that I, I, didn't, I didn't do that <laughs> I put the, I put the panel back on. <laughs> All right. So yeah, she stands up and kind of kicks the wall next to her seat, and you hear this, and then it begins to start humming. Just um, and you see her kind of smirk a little bit. She sits down and looks back at you guys. Ben says, you might want to place those belts at your waist around your bodies. Oh, I was looking mm -hmm. for that. <laughs> How's this thing for? It's a buckle of some sort. It looks like a belt. Hmm. Is it fashionable? Uh, I mean, it's elven made. It was nice at one time. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll put it on. All right. Is anybody not putting it on? Let's try that. And it'll definitely follow suit. I do so, but I'm slightly bemused by it. I'm just like, well, now I'm stuck to the chair. <laughs> I think that's the point, Jimmy. <laughs> Why would you ever want to be stuck to the chair? So we don't fly out of this thing in case something goes wrong. If something well, you goes think wrong, she's going to crash? I'm getting out of the chair as quickly as I can. <laughs> Rad, are you opting to not strap in? I. Uh... Open. Oh, I will take a seat. Yes. But are you strapping okay. into it? <laughs> I've put it on. How do I get it off? <laughs> Pretty sure we'll figure that out. 
Red, are you strapping? We walk. I, I, I guess. <laughs> okay. So everyone's uh, everyone's yeah. strapped in. Why would you res restrain yourself willingly? This the heck is, is this? Tactically, a, a poor decision. <laughs> so she begins to maneuver uh, the controls, and the the craft shifts, and it's a little rocky. It's not a smooth transition. But it shifts upright to the big opening in the ceiling. And uh, she begins to ease the craft out through the hole. Um, it, it bumps and grinds a little bit. And once again, it knocks a lot of debris loose, which showers you as it, as it falls. But then she's free and clear of the ship. And she aims it slowly at the hard specs. The horror specs in the distance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Take uh, the polishing cloth out of my pocket and start polishing my uh, my gun. <laughs> mm, not a gun. How distracted does our elven pilot look right now? How distracted? Yeah, is this consuming a lot of her focus? Oh, she's the totally, the totally focused, yes. All right, I won't ask her then. I'll wait until we get there. All right. I am brimming with questions about this monstrosity. <laughs> so you can immediately feel um, the craft begin to just, it's thrumming with energy it's picking up and kind of knocking a little bit and there's it's not in tip-top shape by any means but she pushes forward on the controls and suddenly the ship just launches into movement the likes of which you have never seen <laughs> ah shit um you are thrown back into your seats like with this crushing weight of movement not not painful like there's some aspect of it that's there's something canceling out a lot of g's here internally but the windows just blur past you and within a matter of two or three seconds you are floating in front of the harrow specs it just comes to like a dead stop um and once you get your bearings, <laughs> you can feel the pull of the vortex from here. It's like a pressure tugging at you, all over you. Uh, imagine uh, if you've ever put your hand over the drain in the bathtub as the water's draining out, that mm -hmm. suction feeling. It's, it's, it's like that all over your body. It's uncomfortable. Uh, it's not painful, but you've got a feeling it could be. <laughs> uh, very quickly. Um, she appears to be scanning the sides of the Harospex where she's come in uh, out, out of her speed maneuver. Um, there's a light that's come on on the exterior of the small craft you're in, and it's kind of moving across the surface of this pockmarked, severely damaged craft. I'll let you guys react or do anything if you want. My earlier enthusiasm is being met with a slight realization Knocking this vessel loose from the middle might cause just as many problems as it solves. <laughs> that is a potentiality. I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Concerned noises. <laughs> All right. Well, if nobody's no. going to do anything, 
Uh, Would if... you look at that? <laughs> um, it's been an hour now, right? Uh, oh, for the light. Right. Uh, I mean, we we can say it has been if you'd prefer. Um, I just would like to know when it uh goes away. Uh, an hour? It, it'd still be there by now. Okay. Te- technically, it hasn't been that long. All right. Um, well, I'm just looking around at this weird ship, and I guess, I don't know if I need to make any rolls for this, but I'm kind of looking at this belt thing I'm wearing now. <laughs> I'm not sure how to get this off of me. Do you cut it? <laughs> I think you work the little flippy bit. Jimmy's currently trying to work the flippy bit. Um. Huh? The moment you touch the buckle, it unhinges. Oh, I yeah, broke it. See, see. Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. Oh, damn. Uh, wait, wait. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's back on now. I got it. So she's scanning around, and then kind of quietly under her breath, you hear, ah, there he is. There you are. And she begins to ease the ship forward towards an opening, a big tear on the side of the ship. Um, oh, Captain, I believe we might... Uh, we might need to explain a little bit about the nature of the issue here in the middle, right, before we go too far in. She's steady easing it forward and kind of glances at you over her shoulder goes back to what she's doing. She says, yeah, go ahead. There is an absolutely massive vortex that is kind of hoovering up this entire region of space, and we are currently trapped in the eye of it. The very center, I assume, to be in the middle of the horror specs. Um, so watch your step. I'm aware, but thank you. Um, you are right to be nervous. <laughs> it's good to have that justified sometimes. A lot of the time when I worry, people just say, ah, what you doing? Admittedly, the people doing that are usually demons or devils of some description, so. Let's just say. Maybe it's just the company I keep. Let's just say don't. Don't exit the ship until we're inside. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seems wise. So she moves the craft through the tear in the side and it opens up into an enormous uh, room made entirely of what appears to be metal. Uh, There's broken, ripped and torn metal all over the place um, as well as a substantial amount of elven remains all over the place in here. Her light is shining around, kind of spotlighting things as she's looking around. And she very slowly, very carefully settles the ship in one of the cleaner parts of the flooring of this room that is easily probably about probably about a thousand yards square. It's very big. Waiting patiently for indications that it is safe to disembark. That is Bryn as well right now. Otherwise, we will be destroyed. So the, the... Go ahead. Did we fiddle with the flippy bit yet? (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, I've already flipped the flippy bit. I'm out. Oh okay, I'll I'll do mine then. Okay. Yeah. So she she settles the craft, um, and it seems like it just it settles very very soft, like no issue, and then it just kind of drops the last few inches with a loud crash that just reverberates 
in, in a way that makes everyone kind of cringe because it was so quiet and a little tense. And then that sudden crash and the jolt of hitting the ground and the, the ship kind of settles to one side at a, a kind of slightly awkward angle as it settles onto the ground. And she, you see her kind of wince and once again curse under her breath. She uh, undoes her own straps and stands up. Um, and once again, she unsheathes the strange-looking weapon at her side and makes for the door. Yeah, Bryn's ears angle downward, like whenever the crash happens. Um, and she sort of just like grimaces whenever uh, that sound happens. But as um, she sees Saren, Saren get up, she'll un buckle and get up herself out of her seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saren. Saren, okay. Yeah, you had it. You're, you're good. Alright. Um, she slides open the door and hops down to the floor um, and illuminates a strange looking light source that actually shines forward in a beam. Not unlike like a beacon lantern, but way more uh, st way stronger intensity of the light. Ooh, nice. Whoa. I used to have one of those, you know, but I, I kind of turned it into something else. And I hopped down behind it. One of what? A pinhole lantern. <laughs> she she kind of giggles. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> 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 What's funny is the thing that it is now is probably a bit more impressive than a flashlight. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that was that was a good natured glass she gave you though. It was. Uh... Mm. But yeah, she's she's looking around. You can tell this is very hard for her seeing the the remains everywhere. Um, you're not sure if this is new or a memory that's bothering her, but it's difficult either way. But she's looking cautiously around the room. This isn't just an exploratory thing. Like she's, her her senses are alert. She's nervous. You can tell. Um, is everyone exiting the craft? Yeah, Bryn mm -hmm. already exited. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Down accelerator to the shoulder, scanning the room for corners and... okay uh sender you with them too just to verify yeah okay good deal all right so everyone's on the floor um lo looking around you can kind of determine that everything that was in this room at one time if there was things in here probably got pulled out of the hole that you guys entered into uh, the bodies it's hard to say what happened they're in advanced stages of decay most of them are just skeletal and most of those remains are scattered all over the place like so there's no real telling what happened here uh exactly but she begins slowly uh with her weapon out and the light shining forward moving across the the very vast expanse of the room um Rat, you can tell that the woman has had some training. Like, the way she is moving, the way she's scanning. It displays some degree of military-esque situational awareness and methodology. Oh, good. That'll save money on her schooling once we get her back to civilization. <laughs> I won't have to send this, this orphan to, to private school. So assuming nobody stops her or makes any deviations, if you you nope. welcome to if you want. I will I nope. will gladly help her clear the room. Alright. She makes her way across the room. Uh, what you got? So there are bones everywhere? Everywhere, yeah. Is this difficult terrain? Uh not quite difficult. If you were to start running through it, there'd be a chance you could trip and fall over some stuff. Not quite difficult. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, she will make her way to um, what at one time must have been a very large door. Not necessarily tall, but very wide. Um, it goes all the way to the ceiling and is very wide. As if She could have driven the, the ship through it that you guys arrived on. That's how wide it is. Um, the doors have been completely blown off. Like, the, the doors are not there anymore. You see scorch marks on the metal all around them, blast marks on the floor. Um, and there's a larger culmination of remains around this area, around this particular area. And she's kind of scanning around, looking at the hallway beyond. Um, it appears to be a, a short kind of gangplank type walkway. Uh, below, there's a, a definite drop. You can't really see where it goes, but it must be pretty far because it goes out of sight. Um, above, once again, a similar situation. It goes very far up out of sight. The gangplank itself that she's illuminating appears to be about maybe 40 feet in length, made of metal suspended between this point of egress and what appears to be another doorway beyond. Creeping along. All right. Yep. Attending my senses to the corpse piles about us in case any of them decide to animate. All right. She steps over them lightly onto the gangplank, which creaks under her weight and sways just slightly, which she can, you see her kind of cinch up a little bit until it goes uh, steady again. <laughs> and she begins to slowly make her way across, turning back to you guys and saying maybe one or two at a time. Mm-hmm. Brin will nod. All right. So she'll make her way across um, successfully. To the doorway. Across. All right. Anyone else? I guess Bryn will go next. She'll walk slowly. Be very careful. Okay. Draken. Right. I will go last. All right. And fly. Okay. Same thing. I'll go ahead of him then. All right, Jimmy. Is two. Um. Okay. Yes, I will walk. Cinder will follow. Okay. So let's do this. One, two, three, four. Okay. How about that? So, uh, Bryn, you were first across, right? Yeah. All right. So, as you're walking across, uh, you hear a couple of the bolts holding the scaffolding just tear free as you get about halfway across. And the whole thing kind of lurches to one side. It doesn't fall or doesn't break, but it lurches. Give me a deck save, please. Oh, God. Okay. You, you catch yourself. No problem. Like, it lurches, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> um, it's it's maybe a... It, it's less than a 45-degree angle now, but you can continue your walk across. <laughs> All right. She does so extra carefully. All right. Uh, the rest of you, I assume, still make the trick? Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of you won't won't trigger it. We've already made your rolls, so you're fine. You make your way across um, to the door. Uh, Bren, as you reach it, uh, Saren actually kind of pulls you onto the landing where she's standing um, and grabs you by the by the elbows kind of underneath your arms as she kind of lean, you know brings you forward and leans down and kind of looks up and tries to make eye contact with you. Okay. And she, she says in a very genuinely concerned manner, and she asks, are you okay? 
Um, a little fluster that gave me a bit of a spook, but um, otherwise fine. Uh, the ship's always been temperamental, but I understand. We just, we need to be careful going forward. I can't afford to lose any more people. <laughs> she nods in agreement. She waits for the rest of you to join them. Um, she looks at you guys as she grabs, she kind of gets a finger hold in the closed door, which is a sliding door that seems in the middle. She says, can one of you help me out and get on the other side and help me pull this open? Bryn will volunteer. Okay. And it's, it's not terribly difficult. It, it's, it's just awkward. Uh, the leverage is awkward. But the two of you managed to kind of slide with a grating, grinding sound. The door is open. Um, inside is what appears to be uh, a large room, probably about 40 foot square. Uh, all of the ceilings are about 12 feet high. Uh, inside is a bunch of toppled furniture, a lot of... Uh, chairs that were mounted to the floor, bolted in, have, that have been broken and, and fallen into disrepair. The upholstery is torn and, and ripped. And tables. The walls are lined with various shelves and storage and cabinets and whatnot. And there is just husks of what is probably was food at one time all over the place, as well as uh, some type of... You assume ceramic plateware all over the place, broken silverware, that type of thing. You assume this is probably some type of galley or cafeteria of some sort. Um, there are several bodies in here as well. Once again, advanced stages of decay, mostly just skeletal remains. Um, you can tell a few of them were crushed underneath falling furniture uh, when they died and whatnot. There are uh, three other entrances into this room. Uh, there's a very damaged door, and we're going to go northeast, southwest, just for ease. Uh, you're coming from the south, okay? All right. Uh, there's a very damaged door to the east, uh, a door similar to the one you just came through to the north, and a utility door to the west. Uh, those of you who can read, Elvin. Which is just Jimmy and Bryn right now. <laughs> okay. You see a sigil on that door to the west with the sign for air. Um... She looks at you guys and says, well, the damage is significant. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure how I'm going to get to the bridge from this location. I remember some things, and I know that a lot of decks were sealed. Um, a lot of doors were either sealed or destroyed in the defense effort. Um, We're going to have to at least get certain systems online. I need your help, if you're willing. Well, of course. She points to the door with a sign for air on it. She says, in that room should be a very large pump-like device. That'll be our first step. I need you to go in there. It'll take two of you. There's a series of three levers on either side of the pump that need to be pulled in unison. Uh, they're numbered one, two, three. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> I.e., if you can read Elvin. Um, do that, and you should hear it begin to vibrate and hum. She's trying to explain this to you. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Uh, you confident this place still has any juice left? It has been sitting here a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the 
Aerospex is still powered. Well, we have to try anyways, Jimmy. Just... You and I go in there? Yeah, sure, we can at least read the stuff for now. Alright. So, two of us going in. Alright. Uh, what's everybody else doing? Anything in particular? Scouting. Where are you scouting? Uh, I don't know. The other door to the east, I guess. Okay. Uh, what are the, the rest of you doing? Anything else? Or are you just hanging out, waiting? I would like to go into the room with Jimmy and the ghost. Okay, that's fine. Uh, is two sender? What about you guys? Hmm. Well, if we can't read Elvin, there's not much to do, is there? That's true. In that room. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other room to the north. Mm hmm. Do we split the party two ways or three? Jeez. <laughs> Splitting the party is always the best option. <laughs> well, if you say so. Um, <laughs> I'm always the best. Option. How big is this um, room with the weird squiggly on it? The room with the weird squiggly, the the mm -hmm. room that they're going in. Right. I don't know what that says. Uh. Uh. Well, if you wait, as as they open the door, inside is probably about a twenty by twenty foot room with a huge huge cylindrical object in the middle of it with several levers on it. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Well. You know how you sometimes put your hand on the back of your neck? Like, hmm. Hmm. The, I guess the I'll universal just kinda... looking at some shit at the job site. Going, <laughs> ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's just like looking to the east at the door that Rat's scouting in and then looks at the other door to the west that everybody's like huddling in the room and like, oh, what is this? What are we doing? What's going on? And it's like, all right, well... Do you want to go west and see what shenanigans they're up to? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can get the doorway right this time, huh? <laughs> All right. So you're going with Wait. everyone into the the air room. Right. Okay. All right. Not that I know that that's what that says. Just kind of like, I guess this is <laughs> the way. The question. All right. Fancy lady says that's where we go, so... Yeah. Yeah, she's digging through uh, the remains around this room. Uh, kind of just... What's she looking for? Like, she's not really sure. She's sifting around looking. So I guess Jimmy and Bran are at the levers? <laughs> All right. What I'm are you going to do? pitching in and help with the digging or whatever we're looking for. Cause okay. That seems like something I, my character would do. Like, okay. Are you going to ask her what she's looking for? Or are you just looking? I, I guess I'll ask. Uh, what are we looking for? A femur? I'm looking for a crystal. Ah. It's a black crystal. About the size of an index finger. Okay. You gonna help I'll her? Look. I'll help look, yes. Okay. Yeah. If I find anything else that isn't that that looks like it could be valuable, I'll um I'll put that beside my left leg for later. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so Bryn will look over at Jimmy and say, Are you ready, darling? Uh, I'm gonna get me gonna get a survey of this real fast. Are they plainly labeled one, two, three? They are. They are. Yeah, I think I can handle this point. Okay. Alright, so count them three then? 
Yeah, we'll do three counts of three just to keep them timed right. Alright, so. One, two, three. First one. Okay. You hear a whirring start to kind of kick up. Mm -hmm. Alright. One, two, three. Next one. Okay. It increases in tone and volume. I must say, she did say they had to be done in unison. Uh huh. I assume she did not mean just slam them all down all at the same time. No. You're right. You got it. Okay. And then the final one. One, two, three. All right. So, yeah, it hums to life. Um, and you hear this loud hiss, this pssssh, as uh, the air in the room begins to move. Um, also, at the same time, a rain of skeletal material falls from above and just showers you with mm. uh, elven remains. Brent will put her arms <laughs> arms above her head and just go, <laughs> um, Don't see why that was necessary. Uh, do you look? <laughs> After the, the shower stops, yes, I will look up. Yeah. Um, looking up, you see a vented area in the ceiling with several large tears in it that have been apparently blown out with a substantial amount of elven remains up there. Um, once again, skeletal in nature. but Maybe just kind of random bones? Uh, there's a big pile of them up there. <laughs> just is it just like leg bones, arm bones? No, they're entire there... entire bodies. Okay, so like vertebrae, and I oh, had yeah. to Google this one. Pelves. <laughs> <laughs> pelves, yes. Loads okay. of pelves. <laughs> so we're getting bonked on the head. Nice. Yeah. Well, okay. they are. They are. You're you're back in the galley, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as as the air begins to move. And the, the you know the thing spins to life. You hear her kind of call from the galley. Good, good. Uh, uh, go in through the next door. There should be one more. And there is a door to the north. All right, Bryn will go yeah. in it. All right. So, sure, no. as you guys head that way, uh, Rat, uh, what are you doing? You're down on the east side next to this extremely damaged door. I think he's gonna be right back. Oh, he did yeah, say he said he'd be right back. Sorry, I just saw that. Yeah, okay. Um, In the meantime, though, I have a question. What's your question? While I was helping look for the black uh, crystal that's the size of an index finger, did I find anything that wasn't that but seemed like it would be useful? Actually, I was just about to have you roll on that. Let's go! All um, right, what am I rolling? Let's see here. Well, first off, do an investigation. Nice. Nice. Very nice. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh. And we're just stealth, stealth robbing this lady. <laughs> All right. So. You definitely found something. Let's see what you found. Uh, give me a D100. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. 42. Um, they found the answer to life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> Let's go! It actually it. is the number! Yes, it is. <laughs> it's the number, yes. The game has been won. Thanks for playing, mm -hmm. everybody. It's been a fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so uh, you you kind of peel up this pile of remains that have somewhat fused together. And it lifts up like sticky cardboard, and uh, you look under it, and there's this mass of about a dozen or so 
small rubber balls. Now, rubber for you is, you don't run into rubber very often. That's pretty rare material. So these are black rubber balls, maybe about an inch in diameter, about a dozen of them. Hmm. Are they like hard rubber or a little bit squishy? Yeah, they're a little bit squishy. You could probably bounce the hell out of them. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> what you do with them is up to you. I will, I will grab this collective of rubber balls and try my best to stealthily grab it. Okay. Uh, I feel like it could be a really good uh, physical manifestation for the most that I can create, could even be. though I can't make like a dozen of them. Could be. Well, she even if she did notice, she wouldn't care. So you're good. Okay. I'll just take these uh, childhood toys over here. All Wait. right. <laughs> All right. And. Uh, Rat, you're back? Yep. Okay. You're at the, the extremely damaged door to the east. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can mechanically figure a way to open it safely. Okay. All right. Uh, you have tinker tools? Yes, I have my all-purpose tool. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, ka -chow. <laughs> Jesus. Artificers, man. Yeah, you uh, find a small panel, and even though you're not really sure what it does, you kind of look at it and you're like, well, this obviously needs to connect to that and this to that, and this is loose and that's cracked. Let me just fix that and push that, and then poof, the door slides open. Um, oh, neat. I can <laughs> fix your tech. <laughs> Can't speak your language, read your words, understand anything. <laughs> I can just fix your stuff. Yeah. Uh, the door slides open and inside is just a imploded room. Like this room is just completely collapsed. You see several skeletal hands kind of sticking out here and there, uh, crushed bone underneath it. There's no way you could move into the room. It's, it's that fallen in. I slide the switch and the door closes it back up. <laughs> Fair enough. And I continue uh, you know, sh you know, accelerator back on the shoulder and continue checking corners and looking around and making a path toward the north door. Okay. Uh, Draken, are you doing anything? Just walking and following. Okay. And me and Ghost. Make sure crap doesn't go down. Okay. And Cinder, just so we're clear, are you doing anything? Are you with us? Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you doing anything, Cinder? Nope. Nope? Okay. He's just watching. Okay. All good. So, uh, in that case, uh, Prim and Jimmy... Or, or Bren and yeah. Jimmy, sorry. <laughs> uh, you guys push your way through into the next room. Mm -hmm. uh, the door it opens maybe about an inch and then feels like it kind of catches on something. Mm. Take a moment, shine a light on it. See if I can, like, peer around through uh, the it, gap. It barely opened. Maybe an inch. I have. One moment, let me find it. <laughs> ah, you can't automatically paste items into chat, I see. I have a steel mirror for such situations. Hmm. Uh, I look around corners and through gaps. What, whatever is keeping it from opening is along the surface of the other side of the door. So you're hitting it with the mirror, whatever it is. Bonk. Say, oh, well, that answers that question. You could try to force it or cut it or whatever. It's up to you. Well, if I can bonk it, I just, 
I tap it through the gap. Does it seem metallic? What are you tapping it with? I had a crowbar in there. Uh, no, it does not seem metallic at all. That's gonna be a corpse, isn't it? That's gonna be a corpse. Question. Mm -hmm. Is a spectral hand solid, or can it pass through gaps? Spectral would imply that it is incorporeal, I believe. But if it's like mage hand, then yeah, it's it's okay. ghostly. So could I just mage hand and grab whatever's behind the door and pull it out and pull it into the room? Uh, no. Because I need to see the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, you'd need to see the other side to direct the hand. It'd also probably be too heavy for Mage Hand. Yeah, most likely. Ten pounds. Yeah. Okay. Eh, well, I asked. It was a good car. Anyway. Good question. <laughs> good question. What are you guys going to do? I'm going to regret this, <laughs> is what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to try to pry the door. What? I'm just uh, going to try uh, and force uh. it. Okay. Is anyone helping, or just you? Rain will help, I mean. Okay. I I can get through there without having to do that. How's that? Hey. You, can't, I, you can't see through it, keep in mind. I don't need to see through it. Uh oh. I'm a... I am going to cast Polymorph. What are you polymorphing? Myself. <laughs> into what? A mouse. Uh. I'm pulling up the spell right now. Okay. Are you sure you want to do that for this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's how he lives his life. All right. Weird. You polymorph yeah. yourself into a mouse. Now keep in mind that you are for all intents and purposes, a mouse. Yes. Um, that also means, in, you know, while you can direct your actions, like your reactions should reflect the fact that you're a mouse. Um, oh, oh, how much does a mouse weigh? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Not much. Not 10 oh. pounds. Let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Don't, don't let us to see you as a mouse. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it now, but. No, I'm just saying, like, is to might eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I was just saying that I could pick, I could pick him up with Mage Hand when he gets back and just Ooh. scoop him and carry him around. Just like. Ooh, Drake, and I don't think you've ever looked this delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm definitely not rubbing my hands together right now, my guy. Like. <laughs> I'm not doing anything else. I'm just saying, snake person, mouse person. <laughs> not Man. a good mix. <laughs> now, just a reminder, the moment I take a mouse, which I, I'm going to say is only one hit point. Yeah. That makes sense. I turn back. Yes. So if you eat the mouse, then you have a fully sized drake in, in your stomach. Yeah, that'd be gross. <laughs> So okay, let's you, not contemplate this for you, you turn I into. I didn't a even mention it. <laughs> no, that was me. I know. <laughs> Church was. <laughs> yes, you can. You can throw. You can carry around a Draken mouse. So you turn into a golden glittery mouse, and you scurry through the opening in the door. Yes. Okay. So, Dragon, first thing that happens is you enter into this very, very dark chamber. Um, you're a mouse, you don't have dark vision, but your senses are very alert. Um, your ears pick up this squelching, squishing sound. Um, and your nose is picking up the, the scent of just gross, raw meat. Um, it's too dark for you to see anything, but you're definitely not comfortable. 
I'm going to leave. I'm going to go back out through the opening. Okay. The mouse scurries back out. <laughs> Can I skip the mouse? Well, keep in mind, you're still in the galley, though. So this okay. is the next room open. <laughs> I would... Okay, I would have gone with everyone. I thought we were all in the same... No, you're still sifting through uh, remains in the galley with uh, How Saren. Long are you gonna... How long are you going to look... <sighs> My God! It's only been a few minutes. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, <laughs> no. it's all good. When we get back to your turn, you can join them if you'd like. It's up to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Draken runs back out. He was only in for a couple seconds. Still in mouse form, I assume. Well, I then would like to turn back. Okay. Uh, yeah. Glad did that go? I am fairly certain there are dead things in there. Yep. Yeah, we figured. <laughs> can you choose to... Just, I guess you can choose to not concentrate on the spell to let it go away. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, no, I'd, I'd let you cancel a polymorph spell. I think the only reason that I stayed in the other form was I had someone helping me, reminding me it was good to stay in that form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> what are you guys doing? Prying now open I'm the going door. to pry open the door. Alright, give me an advantaged strength check. I shall. Oops, forgot to turn that on. It's the exact same. <laughs> okay. Nice. So, that's enough. So you guys pulling kind of on either side of this door, and as you do, you begin to hear this sound. It, it, it sounds like somebody ripping a stake in half very slowly. Um, and as you do, blood begins to just pool and seep out of the door as it's opening. Red, crimson, fresh blood. Uh, oh. I was going to regret oh, every part of this. <laughs> I examine what terrible thing I have wrought. Are you continuing to pull it open? Well, how, how much has it opened, I suppose, is my question. A few more inches. That'll let some light through. What's going on in here? It's meat by the look of it. And it's it looks like there's just meat. strands of meat. Yep. Now, I know this isn't my usual approach. <laughs> I, I allow the door to ease closed again. Okay. But we're going to stop and take a think about this <laughs> before I proceed to open the meat door and introduce us all to the meat. <laughs> to the meat. Let's go back and have a chat. All right. Hey, Dad. So I Jimmy's walking back into the central room, if everybody would care to join. Am I still... Yep. Am I okay. still digging? Well, let's see. You guys are going back to the galley? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. To inform everyone. <clears throat> so as you're heading back, is too, would you like to make one more roll to see if you find anything? <laughs> is that investigation again? Yep. Uh... Is Cinder with me, or is he with them? He's with you. He's just watching. Okay. Uh, well, I guess... I can, I can help. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure you're still here. That's all. <laughs> no particular reason. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yep. Uh, so, uh, investigation. Okay. Investigation. Go for it. Not terribly bad at that, so we're gonna try again. Wow. Okay. Uh... 
Right. I well, didn't wow. kill myself, <laughs> so that's terrible. Roll that's a, a terrible roll. No, roll d100. Oh, right. You find a uh, trap and it finds your fingers, and you lose <laughs> two hit points. Um. Oh right. God. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um. Um. You find a small rectangular bar. Mousetrap. Um, it's, <laughs> it's black and made of some sort of compressed flaky material. It's maybe an inch wide, a couple inches. And, and no, it's maybe about two inches wide, an inch thick, and about three inches long. It smells... Smells like kind of rotten seaweed. Ugh. Compressed what? It's a, some sort of compressed black flaky material. Oh. Have you found a chocolate bar? <laughs> oh, this smells terrible. Still could be a chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, this is gross. Ew. I don't know what this is. What is this? So Cinder is gonna take a look and flaky. Have a look. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna take a look. Yeah, no. I don't know. S same don't thing. Know it's black flaky bar of some sort. Oh shit! It just smells like rotten seaweed. <laughs> but really will sure either of them it lick is, the science? It is not a chocolate bar. <laughs> it is not a chocolate bar. No. Hmm. Are you guys both kind of investigating this together? Probably against all reason that I should be looking for the crystal right now. That's all right. I'm just puzzled by whatever this is. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. Most of the things you're going to see in this place are going to be very outlandish and weird and alien. So it's only normal for you to react in a way that's appropriate like that. Um, Siren will actually look up and see what you're doing. And she'll say, I would need that if I were you. <laughs> Stinky black thing, not food. It's like that's probably about a two hundred year old algae bar. I wouldn't wouldn't need it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I toss it aside and keep looking. Okay. I guess since we're stuck here looking for this thing until she's done, so. All right. Speaking of things that nobody should be eating, Rin says as they come into the room. Was yeah, that... so the uh, the first one went all right. Istu's listening but doesn't even look up. What's, what's the matter? What exactly was going on on this ship? Rimage, rimage. What do you mean? Rimage, rimage. The corpses, they don't bother me too, too much, you know. You leave a few people in space for a few centuries, you expect some corpses. There's a door north out of that room over there, and it is blocked by meat. Meat? That spilled fresh blood as we tried to force the door open to get to the last lever. That doesn't make sense. No. No, it doesn't. It does not. And when things don't make sense, I like to consult my people. Uh, first question. If we just opened the door and just dumped fire into the room, would that be a huge problem? Yes. How huge are we talking? Um, oh god, oh god, we're all gonna die? 
All right, just had to check. <laughs> First inclination, I did master it at the time, fortunately for us all. Secondly, do we desperately need to shut, uh, to turn on the device in there? Yes. All right, third question. Who wants to come cut their way through the meat room? Show of hands. I look around at everyone. This two looks Shut. up. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I assume I eat meat, right? Yes, almost exclusively. Huh. <laughs> uh, did somebody say meat room? There is a meat room. It's right over here. Uh, I'm not drooling. There's nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the 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 black crystal we were searching for is, holds less and less interest. <laughs> oh my god, a room of meat! I've never seen that. And I would have preferred that I never did. Let's go I mean... check it out. Uh, wait, <laughs> Just... so it's a room that's made out of meat? Uh, there is a very high proportion of meat going on in there. What, like a storage locker? No, not that kind. Come on, come on, look. Come on, look. <laughs> I don't know I'm already, already skeevedly being over there, just <laughs> like... <laughs> Jimmy's getting everybody in on this. He looked at that and said, executive decision, not my problem. So, as you guys enter in and, and make your way to the door, the first thing you do notice, those of you just entering the room, is that there is a substantially large puddle of blood still issuing forth from the slight opening of the door. Um, fresh blood. Who'd you kill? Nobody. <laughs> Though I can see why you'd think that. Yet. Hmm. Uh, I would like to investigate why this is happening. I'm very confused. Okay. Well, I mean, you're, you've, it's only open about an inch right now because they let it kind of reclose a little bit. Then they let uh, it go. I guess if I open it again, will it... Um, hmm. Here, I'll lean on the pry bar a bit so you can have a look and then you know, make your professional assessments. And then hmm. I do so. Okay. Um. As you slide the door open, I, I, I shoulder the accelerator. Okay. I was going to put two test shots uh, from the ballista in. Are you aiming a weapon into the room? Yes. Okay. I'd be careful about that into, rat. Into the the meat gap, I think. So, Saren will actually kind of gently push down the barrel of your weapon and shake her head and say, "No, no, that's a very, very bad idea." <laughs> that hmm. large central tank in that room will detonate and vaporize us all if you shoot it. Oh. Does she speak common finally? Oh, she's been speaking common. Oh. Huh. The markings are not in common. Yeah, just the, the written language is in Elven. She was speaking only Elven whenever, like, she first woke up, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm talking about for now. She has been. Oh, yeah. I know. Okay. Just saying why everyone yeah, else would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's no, that's understandable. I thought I thought she's been speaking exclusively Elven this entire time, so I've just been ignoring everything. Oh no no no! It, when she first woke up, she was in Elven only mode. <laughs> hmm. Can I enter the room, or is it just? Do you want to finish tearing it open? I mean, I guess. All right, give me a strength check. Oh God! Advantaged uh, if you're getting help. <laughs> the the right. presence of the crowbar also grants advantage on this particular check. Yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> make, make a strength check. Oh god. <laughs> 15. Uh, Not bad. <laughs> right. No, you, you managed to wrench the door open the rest of the way. It, it opens with this sickening, tearing sound, and just a fresh gout of blood just washes out of the room across the floor. Um, inside, you see basically a mirror of the room that you're in, the central cylinder in it, uh, grating along the ceiling. Um, there is uh, two more doors in the room that you can see, one on the east, one on the west. Mm -hmm. However, the big difference in this room and the one that you're in is everything in this room is covered with this weird membranous meat substance. It's pulsating slightly, bleeding it's where it's torn. Is the sound sickening to like a normal person or like? Uh, even for you, this is like, that's not right. That's, that's unsanitary. <laughs> and it's, it's what now? It's wet meat slowly pulsating in a membranous form that is covering everything in the room. Including the device we need? Including the device you need. I slide my eyes over to Jimmy. The fuck? <laughs> I put my hands up and I say, listen, I'm not any more happy about it than you are. I look over at... Is it Saren? Saren. <laughs> Now, now that you've got some idea of the situation here, I ask again, is it that important? Because if all these things are doing is providing air, I don't technically need that. Uh, well, it's more about circulation than needing air. Uh, trouble <laughs> with phlogiston is you can't really cook your meat properly. <laughs> I guess I look around for whatever this knob is that we're in. I don't know. What the fuck am Wrong I doing? knob. Wrong knob. <laughs> oh god, he went there. All right. <laughs> I suspect that, you know, looking at this, thinking about my long history of things that want to kill me, there might be things on this ship that we don't really want circulating. Just looking at this <laughs> membrane, like Jimmy. Remember how I <laughs> chastised Rat and others for smoking on the Whispering Gale because it would make the air go bad. Yes, yeah, I, I recall this. I assume this. If I had to guess, the circulation was is there to prevent the air on the ship from going bad. Everybody with their just addiction to having air. Have you considered dying instead? <laughs> well, you're not exactly all the way dead yourself, Jimmy. We we picked know. we picked something up on the last world we were on. Now we're getting somewhere. What manner of thing Gosh. was it? You know, I wish I could tell you. It was chaotic. We were there, and then suddenly there were alarms, and this huge force just was detected rapidly moving towards the planet, and we barely got out of the way. It winged the ship pretty good. Whatever was in that force infested the ship. Now, we did deduce in session before last that this ship had visited Cairn, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, we, we did get that far. Yeah, I've got, I have a notion what that might have been. What on earth could have jumped a ship from that to this? I really would rather not think about this doesn't look to me like anything that would have come from the negative energy plane, though. You would be surprised the nonsense they have in there. <laughs> the what? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, didn't you say you visited Cairn's surface? Yes. It's not <laughs> looking too good. They, there was some bullshit. It was a little bit everywhere. So, I'm not going to rule out this being related. But, it does beg the question... It just wouldn't make sense to me, Jimmy. The negative energy plane is not conducive to hosting life. It destroys everything it touches. I mean, we, we did see that weird creature type thing when we looked. Maybe that's some sort of perversion? Trust me. There were all sorts of things in there. In fairness, none of them were massive walls of flesh. <laughs> Do we just cut our way through? I can't help but think that something will go terribly wrong if we just try to cut our way through. Or we have someone reach in there with mage hand or something of that nature to turn on the switch that way pull the lever whatever <laughs> <laughs> i don't see anything this place is just so weird wait do we actually see the lever can we uh you can see where they are do i have to touch the squishy stuff to oh my god you <laughs> oh yeah, we absolutely have to have to be squished. Okay, I gotta. Before I say this, no one clip this, okay? <laughs> okay. Do not. Do we have an agreement? Okay. I've never clipped a thing in my life. <laughs> All right. I'll be how good. big? How big is the knob I'm looking for? <laughs> They're levers. <laughs> All right, the lever. You did it to yourself. You didn't even have so, to say it. Like how that. large is the lever? How large is the lever? They're they're average sized. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the size of the lever. It's how you use it. Okay. The church though has always done it on purpose and will never not do it. Studies have shown that the lever has gotten larger in the last thirty years. I'm just gonna die. Okay. Okay. Is the lever in question covered in the membrane that we've mentioned previously? It, it it is covered. Yes, all all six of them are covered. And the lever, I assume, is also uh, gesticulating <laughs> all in a similar of... fashion as to the rest of the meat along the surface. I'm so proud of everyone for not saying meat curtains. You're good. <laughs> didn't, didn't You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. Okay. All, anyway, <laughs> all six levers, and we only needed to pull one. All six levers. Remember, you each pulled three. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same setup as the last one. And there's this. I thought we only pulled three levers. Yeah, each we were pulling three. levers simultaneously on both sides of the machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, six you guys total. are gonna. So they're gonna have to pull these two then. Correct. All right, I don't have to touch it. Cool. <laughs> this place is gross. The floor is squishy, and I don't want to be here. <laughs> it's full of puns that I didn't mean to make, and I will exit the room. I need that on a t-shirt. I'm just, I'm having an awkward day. This place like, is gross, the floor is squishy, and I don't want to be here. That's that's my motto <laughs> for life right there. Also, yeah. and full of puns that I didn't make. You forgot about that. And full I, of puns I, that I didn't make. Yeah. I, I envision Istu, like, looking at the ceiling, uh, moving their eye line to the floor, like, almost taking a knee to look down at something on like the baseboard level and then turning their eye line and noticing that they're just staring dire directly into, into Cinder standing there. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, levers. <laughs> We're just still Somebody have of days. prestidigitation on standby and Jimmy walks over. You guys have to touch that. Wait, That's wait, disgusting. Wait. <laughs> Can we just try cleaning the levers first? Like, press the digitation them before we grab 
But there's a meat carton on them. Yeah, th this isn't there it is. that can be cleaned away with prestidigitation. This is like it it's covered in meat. Now, if you've been working on yours and you think it's leveled up a bit recently, go ahead. I mean, Bryn will follow in after Jimmy. She's gross. She is very <laughs> grossed out, but at, at least she's wearing heeled shoes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mm. So what's what's the plan? I'm walking up. I stand before one side of it. I look at Black Jammer and I say, "Now nah, you don't deserve that." And I draw my regular sword. <laughs> oh, the stalwart wall. Yeah. And I just, I start carving a flap back and I say, I hate this. I hate it here. I hate every second of this. Wish I'd never come. All right. So you start carving at this meat curtain. Um, as you do, you hear this squishing sound kind of above you. This like horrible, like squelching I dodge noise. out of the way. You dodge no out of the way. need to finish the sentence. You dodge out of the way and, and look up. Yes. And you see... Bren will jump back as well. This huge sheet of flesh above you that just... It, it filters out throughout the entire room and you realize you're looking at the source of this. And it is a face. There is an elven face stretched out of weird proportions up there. And what appears to have been maybe at one point even a body that has been changed somehow into what you're seeing. And as it, you jump back, you see this head kind of swivel a little bit and squish and force itself to turn. And these misshapen, odd angled eyes open and blink a few times. And then this mouth splits open in a weird crooked smile with jagged teeth and says why are you hurting me uh, Saren goes white <laughs> I shake the blood off of the sword and I say I regret everything I've ever done in my life Bryn... everything I've ever done after my life Friend's eyes have narrowed. She's got her hands clasped over her mouth, and Bryn's skin was already white. But she is a living being with blood underneath that skin, so it has a teeny tiny bit of a pink tint that is gone. <laughs> you tell him. A third time, I ask you. Exactly how important is it to turn this thing on? Uh, imperative? <laughs> Are you sure I can't shoot it? Bryn will look at the mouth or look at the face and try talking to it. We're sorry about that. We didn't realize that your entire body was a sentient being. We're trying to turn on this machine that is underneath you. Friends lives in Sigil. She's seen some <laughs> weird stuff. Why are you here? That's a person? That's a person. That's a person. I was walking on... Okay. <laughs> I, I am fully out of the doorway now. I'm like, Language could you... Amendment. Yeah, it... it... I don't... <laughs> yeah, I... why are you here? Like, Bryn will just look back at Jimmy and uh, Saren <laughs> for them to answer that. We are regretfully trapped I need to get the ship moving so Sarah will actually kind of shake her head swallow nervously and say I am Saren Feywin 
captain of this ship and I need to activate the air purification filters. <laughs> uh, the face seems to contort slightly at this. Fay wind. Fay wind. Fay wind. And the meat begins to pulse. <laughs> uh, good thing I'm not in there. Jeez. Yeah. Now, now can I? Brain has it? like gone out of the room. <laughs> Cinder, are you out of here with out, out there out of there with me, or are you, are you in there still? So, Saren's shocked. Saren. She's Saren. terrified. Saren. What are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I shoulder the accelerator and I begin charging. Okay. Guys, <laughs> rat, you hold off. Get out of there. <laughs> I'm not aiming at the central exploding pillar. I'm aiming at the the face in the wall. Uh, I wouldn't. That machinery could be covering the entirety of the room that this flesh is covering. All the more reason to take it down. <laughs> what are you guys doing? No, because you could vaporize <laughs> all of arguing. us. Um, Istu wants to make sure Cinder's not in the room when all this is going on. Is Cinder in the right. room? I'm pretty sure everyone's out of the room. Let's just make sure we're safe. Yes. Right? Saren's cool. still in the room. Uh, well, I don't really know Saren, so... <laughs> These two are bickering. We're uh, not, like, we're gonna... close. Bryn will we're, just pulse... gonna... we're just gonna get out of the blast radius. Bryn will to... pull Saren backwards and sort of, like, hold Rat's accelerator down. Okay. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> Extra the, safe. <laughs> the, the face continues to escalate. Um, it's frothing at the mouse. Feywind! Feywind! And the meat's just pulsing and pulsing. And you can hear it squelching loudly as it begins to move. Grace! <laughs> Not ideal, really. <laughs> Bryn will look that, at Rad and say... That's a luring visual. <laughs> Bryn will look at Rad and say, wait, at least wait until this thing is out of the room, all right? How do you know it can get out of the room? <laughs> it's it is the now. room. Sculching, pulsing, membranous substance. It's just, it's just yelling at us angrily. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, folks, we never did take that break we were gonna do, did we? <laughs> oh yeah, we, we technically did not. Would you guys like to take our union break? <laughs> it's like eleven eighteen though. It's We've got like forty minutes left, and our union breaks usually run like twenty minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Eh. We can keep going. I'm fine. To you guys. I'm fine. All right. I just wanted to mention it. I just thought it was good timing. <laughs> right. So everyone has moved out of the room. You hear the meat squelching and moving and twisting. And and everyone's kind of arguing and trying to figure out what to do. Uh, as you do, you see this elongated tendril of flesh just come up and out of the uh, the opening of the doorway with the face distorted and kind of squeezed back and all misshapen as it peels out of the room still screaming Feywind! Feywind! And <laughs> I would like to do something. <laughs> what would you like to do? I am going to cast this on it. I'm going to try to polymorph it. Because it works on creatures. This is so. true. Hmm. As long as it's not a shape shifter, which I don't think it is, I'm going to try to polymorph it. Well, into a is, slot. This is actually a debatable mention here as far as it, whether or not it's a shape changer. It has changed shape, <laughs> but could it do it again? That's usually like the criteria. Does it have the shape changer uh, tag and or can it do anything like brain can do? <laughs> uh, not technically what you can do, but it, it is literally an amorphous creature. I get the feeling this is like a homebrew creature. Oh, oh it is. Church <laughs> has been watching a lot of Cronenberg recently is what I'm kind of picking up here. And the 
the definition of the word shape changer is something that changes shape, right? right? Yes. Which this the thing ability... just did before our eyes, so therefore I mean, it could be that. Technically, Cinder's got a flamethrower. I mean, <laughs> fireball? Question mark? Because uh, it... <laughs> shapeshifter, obviously, it's your call. I've always thought of it as it's a different shape as opposed I, to I, it I, just being amorphous. I'm going to say Same. based on the, the size of the thing and the fact that it is amorphous, that it, this will, it will fail. In, in uh, this particular instance. It was a very good plot. It was a very good plot, but I'm going to say in this particular instance, just based on what it is, it would fail. Alright, I still would have... Wouldn't know that, so I tried to cast it. No, no, it was, it was like I said, it was a good plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. The thing is very big and amorphous. <laughs> what was this room again? 20 feet or something? 20 by 20. Something covering that amount of surface area and getting all, all glopped Wait. together. So, yeah. if I remember right, the gale is also... A shape changer stroke amorphous blob in its natural form and not normally a ship. Technically, yeah. Yep. Is this like a similar thing to the Gale? No. <laughs> Just check. This is an elf that unfortunately did not die. <laughs> so. I will give you one more action before this becomes an encounter. Anyone care to make that one action? Oh, I just don't. How far away can I get? Jesus. <laughs> don't. Don't. I mean, How far if away? no one else will, I'm going to attack again. How far away <laughs> can we get? Okay. That's, that's a Draken maneuver right there. Yeah, you'll, you'll hit it. It doesn't seem to care or notice, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> so you hit it with a ray of frost as this tangled mass of tendrils begins to just issue out of the opening uh, at you guys. The blob. I will. Can I? I'll slow it down at least a little bit. Wait, wait. Draken, Draken, slow down. <laughs> Let's get some uh, initiatives going here. <laughs> uh, oh. Alright. Now is my chance to see if this works. Let's see. Haha. Oh, very nice. There you go. Holy shit. A 28, thanks to Finis. Nice. Is that everybody? Yes, yes, yes. I think. Where's Cinder? There he is. Cool. Good. That's everyone. Are we ratless? We might be ratless. No, we uh... got a rat. We're good. I see, yeah. Is that everybody? Yeah, that's all Where's of us. Where's the enemy? Oh. oh, okay, yeah. All of us, yeah. Okay. There we go. You've got the enemy's <laughs> name is 15. <laughs> his, his name is 15. Uh, it's, it's like Stranger Things, except a lot more gross. <laughs> All right, oh, uh, this too. You're up first. <laughs> All right. Um, I assume from this that this dude is not gonna leave us alone. So, based on that and the fact that we're having to convince Rat not to shoot it, um, I <clears throat> shot it. This dude's just gonna. This dude's gonna strategize and try to use one of the stars off the crown that's on their head already. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so, we'll just start the attack, I guess. We're fighting. Let's fight. All right. I don't know. Make your attack. Um, <clears throat> which is the, uh, obviously, the d20 plus 10. Let me see. Roll that. 23. That'll hit. Roll damage. Okay. Uh, on a hit, a target takes 4d12 radiant. Uh, let me roll that. 4d12, that's 30. Okay. 30 okay. points of damage. Okay. That and... was uh, radiant, right? Right. Okay. So now I'm down to 6. Okay. Good um, deal. Anything else for you? Assuming that the thing is here, right? Ish? It's right in front of you, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Strategically gonna scooch on back here. <laughs> okay. Still within five feet, but technically farther away. Okay. So that's turn. Just gonna watch for any, uh, any incoming <laughs> projectiles or, or tendrils. <laughs> oh my god, this is gross. <laughs> uh, here. Uh, let's see here. Do I have a... I'm gonna do this real quick for you guys. That's everybody. Oh no. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see here. We're going to draw. Oh God. It cleared the turn order. <laughs> yep. Did it? Yeah, unfortunately. Rest in peace. Enemy gets infinite turns. We get nothing. I still have the turn order on my screen. Okay, it's not showing on ours. Ah, well, you found yet another fun bug. That's a feature. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> All right, so... Look at this, this is creativity on the fly. Hey, we're getting there. All right, so there's the door. And of course, he's coming through the door. So <laughs> yes, of course. He's a Blah, look at my ugly face. Blah. Okay. Ew. All right, so I still have the turn order on my screen. So, okay. is two, you've made your move, right? Yes. All right. Rat, you're up. Ew, I shoot him in his ugly face coming through the door. All right, you are shooting. Ah, uh, bazap. Oh! With Ray of Frost. Right? Yes, Ray of Frost into into his ugly face coming through the door. Okay. Um, Solid hit. God dang. And and then ka chunk ka chunk. With the force ballista. With the force ballista, on the upper and lower uh, end of the of the of the accelerator. All right. They hit, uh, blood sprays out everywhere as they do. Uh, once again, puddling on the floor all around you. Uh, it doesn't seem phased, but once again, it's, it's hard to tell what it feels and what it doesn't. I'll take a... Yeah. 
I'll just stay there. That's fine. Okay. That's all. Okay. Cinder, you are up. Well. <laughs> are we hitting this thing then? <laughs> Everyone yeah. else seems to be. All we right, have yeah. things to hit that doesn't endanger the room, so. <laughs> okay then. Then let's hit this thing. Okay, I'm just gonna, yep. Uh... Get the tendrils, get the face. Tendrils and the face. You're gonna All move right. up into melee range? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have. I'm not gonna do booming blade. I'm gonna have two attacks. And, um. Ooh, actually, bonus action. Let's have a look at my bonus actions real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do hex blades cut. That way, if I I can crit on a nineteen or a twenty. Okay. And yeah, and then I'll have my two attacks. So I'll do be doing extra damage as well. All right, so I'm gonna move you up into melee range. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, hex blades curse. Um. Here's for one minute, plus five to damage rolls, and score crit on a 19 or 20. So I'll have my two hits. <laughs> That's one hit. Yeah. Right. Dog, look at Both hit. And then, and, and then uh, one, one good hit uh, so far, and then second hit. Hit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, altogether 28 damage. Alright. I am not gonna smite currently. You splash blood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it for you? Uh, yeah. Okay. My turn. Several tendrils of chunky flesh flash out of the room. Mm. Let me check something here real quick. Do do. Oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay, here we go. Cinder, you're right in front of it, so you're going to catch two of these. What's your AC? Uh, 20, currently. Okay. It can improve. It can improve. You got shield or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we go... 24 for the first yeah, get, Oh Yeah, shield's going to pop off. Okay, that's plus 5? Yep, yeah, so 25 now. All right, so those, uh, I believe the first one still hits with the shield, though, right? No. It's a reaction to being hit. My, technically, boosts my AC as a reaction above it, so it's like the, the shield bounces out, so it doesn't technically hit me. I was always thought it was a reaction to being hit. No, shield goes before you take damage. Otherwise, what would the point of the spell be, really? That's fair. No, but it's fine. Yeah. All right, so you managed to deflect them. Uh, let's see. We've got three more attacks, so... Based on what I'm seeing here of the layout... <laughs> uh, we're gonna go with Draken, for one. AC Draken. One moment. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, yeah, that, that. Oh, no, that actually would have hit and add the bonus. I've got your fortified position for half cover. You're within my. Do -do -do -do. Oh, yeah. What? Um, What's the bonus of that? Plus two? Plus two. Okay. So you yeah. grant plus two in a radius? What? You know it. Yeah, it's magical cover from nothing. It's amazing. D&D is so stupid. <laughs> you know, Artificer is the best class. Alright, and uh, Bryn, you're catching the next one. Okay. Alright. Uh, 
Alright, what's your AC? Well, with Rat's fortified position, it is currently 19. Okay. Barely missed. Boom. Yeah, we gotta get out of this system. Yeah, this is it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? And then the last attack is actually coming from the head. And it is going to lash out like a snake at Saren. And barely miss, thanks to Rat's mysterious magical cover from nothing. See, it's not <laughs> totally bullshit when it, when it works for your NPCs. No, no, it's broken and stupid. You have cover from nothing. <laughs> it the, is a the, cover the bonus. Is shimmering. It has a cover bonus from nothing. <laughs> what are you half covered by? Nothing. And shimmering air. It's, it's great. I mean, the same argument can be said with the shield reaction. Well, no, I it's... mean, it's it, the whole system's dumb, let's be honest. It's so broken. <laughs> it's kind of the phrasing that's funny. It's because, like, shield is a spell and it grants you a plus to AC, and so does, like, a couple of paladin ores, I think. But this, yeah. this is like an aura of half cover. Yeah. I, I'm not knocking you guys for using them. You're within the, the rule set. It's not you guys, so don't take that the wrong way. It's just the it's system. It's just a is... very silly way to do that. Yeah, the system is incredibly broken. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. So yes, a whole round of misses. You are good. Draken, you are up. I will be using that the mind rack like earlier. Mind sliver. Mind spike. Mind spike. Is that what it was? Yes. Scroll up to see it's it like here. A glance. Uh, wisdom saving throw. Yep. Okay. Nope. So it'll take seventeen points of psychic damage. All right. And then I am gonna move. Oh. All right, you're moving. Yes. That will in cause an attack of opportunity. I know. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> no, I get it. I didn't disengage. All right. Nineteen. That will hit. Okay. So yeah, one of the tendrils of flesh lashes out at you for Oops. fourteen damage. Oh, yeah, it could have been worse. It cold cocks you with a lump of flesh. <laughs> All right, that it for you, Draken? Yep, that's the end of mine. All right, Bryn, you're up. All right, well, let's see what tail we get. God, she needs a long rest so bad. <laughs> okay, we'll do Renowned Duelist again. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. She summons a spirit. <laughs> Solid hit for another 19. Alright. And that's her turn. Another spray of blood. This is like, starting to look like one of those old samurai films. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Saren. Saren will take out her pistol. Dang. You go, girl. You go, girl! <laughs> she will fire twice at the face in a panic. Not even concerned about exploding what's beyond. <laughs> um, yeah, it sears holes through it. Choo -choo. All right. And Jimmy, you are up. Those were solid hits, jeez. <laughs> we have done so much damage to this thing. What the fuck? 
Yeah, it's soaking a lot of it, but it's spewing blood every time you hit it, so you're definitely doing it damage. I'd like to note that I regret everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can spew everywhere. I tried to get out of this from the beginning. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Ah, a rare miss. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. That is incredible. Wait, but did Rats 13 yeah, with his Force Ballista hit? Oh, well, I assumed that a 14 wasn't going to hit shit. Oh, no, no. Hit. Yeah, no, you hit. Sorry, I was just uh, taking your word for it. <laughs> I looked at it and say, well, that's not a 20. That can't possibly do anything. Yeah, because Rat hit with two 13s, so... No, yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> All right, I deal 44 damage. All right, you nearly cleave the face from the stalk that it's on. It's just, like, hanging by some threads and spewing gore out on you. All right, since I already had the stalwart wall out, I will take a follow-up attack with my dual weapon fighting. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Sorry about this, buddy. <laughs> oh. The sneak attack does not apply. It only does the 13. That is significant enough. So you managed to completely sever the head from the stock that it's on. Uh, the <laughs> remaining, app <laughs> remaining appendages flail around uh, as the stock and head falls. It lets out this horrendous, just gurgling scream as fluids continue to pour out, spraying everything in the room as it flops and twitches and finally just begins to shiver and slowly go still. Uh, everyone is just covered in viscera at this point. It's probably going to need a good ten minutes. <laughs> Dragon, is there any way you could press the digitation? The... Yes, please, God. <laughs> oh no, no, he's already like the moment it's over, he is casting. Now he does start with himself, but then he will, yes, of press course. the digitation everyone else as well. I appreciate it. I would, but I need to rest. <laughs> okay. So. First things first, um, are you guys going to flip the levers? <laughs> yeah. I'm not there. Well, we've gone and killed someone for it. We may as well. Alright. So yeah, you managed to flip the levers. We'll, we'll just say it's it's no problem. You managed to power on the second purifier. Yeah, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy and Brim will probably do the same as last time, <laughs> except a lot quicker. Like, one, two, three, click. One, two, three, click. One, two, three, click. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> You'll manage to power them on without issue. Um, it's, it's definitely no problem. Um, it's been a slightly harrowing experience. Saren looks exhausted. Um, not only is she just woken up from an extended stint in stasis, she's just nah. discovered the body of her mother, the basically obliteration of her people, and the derelict ship that she's lived on her entire life. Um, and just murdered a big fleshy monstrosity. Um, that was once one of her people. Yes, yes. She's going to suggest going back to the room you landed in and using the craft, the, the pod, um, to recoup and rest. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I'm <laughs> fine with that. Okay. So, you guys make your way back without issue. Um, other than, you know, the nightmares that you'll probably have later. And I will give you guys your, your long rest. Woo! Uneventfully. Back on the ship. And uh, I'm going to say we'll probably call it here, if that's cool with you guys. I think one of you said you needed to cut out a little early, possibly, anyway. Uh, That's that fair. Seems yeah. Fair. But this is a good stopping point. So, uh, 
we can pick up next time with the continued exploration of the Haro Specs. Can I ask what the arrangement is, what the size of this pod is? Like... <laughs> as far as what? It's not cramped um, enough to where you'd have to sleep on top of each other, if that's what you're worried about. I didn't ask that. I just was <laughs> asking what the dimensions of the thing are. Like, what are we doing for a watch order? <laughs> I, I'm being normal. Why are you making it up? Why are you being weird? <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about it being cramped. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a totally normal 5th edition D&D player. I'm being wholesome. Um, but if there's any girls there, I want to do them. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, <clears throat> You've been playing Conan too long. <laughs> <laughs> I actually stopped playing Conan, but we'll talk about that later. All right. Anyway... So, so we'll call it here. We'll give you guys your yeah. long rest. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying your run into the horror specs of horrors. <laughs> it's interesting, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of interesting things in store. <laughs> um, I, I apologize Life for not has having ruined everything I ever wanted. <laughs> Home world gone. <laughs> Cool ship I wanted to steal? Meat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even expect that. And then it just exploded all over us in the excitement. Can't but have nothing. I, I actually do, like, I, I apologize for not having maps made for all this. Um, it's all good. I, oh, I don't bro, think it's all right. Don't worry. I about mean, it. really, I don't think we'd want penis shaped maps <laughs> well uh, he here's the thing um and i'm, I'm going to say this while we're broadcasting mm -hmm. so there's a lot of map mapping tools for for tabletop gaming right out there yes. you, as you guys have seen i use a lot of them for all kinds of stuff incarnate and you know the the ones that i used for the isometrics and even the animated maps we used to use back in the day there's a lot of tools, but almost zero tools for any type of sci-fi creations. Uh, they are so few and far between, and the ones that are out there are mediocre at best and difficult to use. Uh, so I actually have been fighting with getting this. I have a layout for the ship that I'm actually using. Um, uh, and it's a system that kind of builds a ship layout from another game. Uh, mm -hmm. One that we may play in the future, because it's actually a pretty cool looking game. Uh, it's a kind of sci-fi horror game, but we, we talk about that another time. But it, it's an interesting system for building a ship layout and allowing players to, to explore it in a, in a feasible way without it sounding random or, or weird. That's a good gif. Um, but yeah, so it, I will continue to work. It's something I'm going to keep working on because I always prefer for you guys to have a map of some sort, um, you know, throughout our whole experience. That's always been a big deal. But uh, other than that, I, I do hope you guys are having fun. I, I know this is a really weird stretch for a D and D game. <laughs> Hey, it's good. Things have been weird around here since we hit, like, level 13. Yeah. Plus, like, we've literally gone into a sci-fi setting, like, exploring the ruins of a very, very, very highly advanced elven civilization <laughs> where there's a high likelihood that a lot of what is on the ship has gotten warped by the exact same blight that has hit Cairn. And we all know what sort of fuckery is in Cairn, so, I mean... All kinds of nonsense could happen. <laughs> you kind of true. expect the weirdness, or at least I'm expecting the weirdness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying it because I think it is taking the game in a unique direction, uh, especially for a 
a game that's so based in fantasy and and it's interesting watching your characters react and interact with things that you know in character they would have no means of of really understanding or making an association with something else with mm -hmm. Like Bryn picking up a keyboard, holding it above her head and shaking it and yeah. accidentally pressing keys on it that happened to turn on the console in front of her, which she doesn't know that that's a fucking computer, so she just <laughs> calls it a magic window. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because as far as she's concerned, like there's some minor illusion magic in there. And, and it's fun. And there's going to be aspects of this technology that you can potentially find along the way and potentially either be shown how or figure out how to use as well. So keep an eye out. You never know. A rat with a laser gun might be a cool thing. <laughs> uh, the one that Saren's using is actually pretty effective, apparently. <laughs> yeah. That seems good. But yeah. So yeah, we will uh, <clears throat> pick back up with this adventure in two weeks time and of course we will be back to uh, world of cairn next saturday uh wednesday tomb of annihilation i think thursday is back for witch light we're wrapping those up we've had some holdups uh, just real life getting in the way but we're looking forward to wrapping those up and moving on to the next games uh, deadlands for one of them i know for sure which i'm very excited about uh, Friday, we're back to Star Wars. Um, the Star That's getting interesting, not going to lie. <laughs> Things are happening. Yeah, uh, and Sam is a lot of fun for me to play. It's it's fun to play a big, dumb brute. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss those. Uh, also, once again, we have a lot of new games in the works. I know Chance is working on Avatar. That'll be announced soon. Uh keep an eye out join our discord for more information and to keep an eye out because discord gets priority when we do send the word out for new games you don't want to miss that chance because it's going to be sexy as hell <laughs> so that being said ladies and gentlemen uh in the audience ladies and gentlemen and of course uh, in, in the player base here. Thank you all very much. I've had fun. Hope you have too. And we will see you all very soon. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Adios.